Now, when I first found out the 2017 Royal Rumble was going to be at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, I harkened back to 20 years ago when the Royal Rumble was there, and I said, oh God, let's not have it be as bad as that Rumble match was 20 years ago, and that frankly that show was, and let's hope that it doesn't fit into the category of, as Jim Cornette of all people put it 20 years ago so eloquently, you had this huge venue, and what you ended up having was an arena that needed a show as opposed to a show that needed an arena. And what that means is they got the big venue and they had to put something in it as opposed to having something that was worth putting in a big venue. Now, granted, 20 years later, I think in a lot of ways the WWE could potentially find themselves in a similar type of position or situation here with the Royal Rumble, in part because when you talk about WrestleMania and that huge venue of WrestleMania, you announce the location a year ahead of time. And tickets go on sale months and months in advance. And people from all over the world literally have plenty of time to plan and prepare for going to that type of event, that type of weekend. Actually, it's not even a weekend anymore. It's a WrestleMania week. So when you do it with the Royal Rumble and you only announce it a few months ahead of time, you face all of the pressures potentially of trying to fill a WrestleMania-sized arena and you've given yourself a third of the time in which to do so. So that's challenging in and of itself. Also, you look at the state of the product as a whole right now, other than WrestleMania, and part more so than anything because of WrestleMania being an event a weekend a week, uh, you could end up with another situation where at the Alamo Dome, you'll have a stadium and arena that needs a show more than a show that merits or deserves a big 60, 70,000 seat arena like the Alamo Dome just like 20 years ago. With that said, though, I do think that this can be a good thing for the WWE. One thing that this pr product in general lacks, I think, is a feeling of uniqueness, uh, that feeling of things being special. It's the one thing that WrestleMania has. It has the Hall of Fame weekend. It has the access. It has all of these different things. It has the WrestleMania or the NXT shows tied into it. It has all of this stuff all throughout the course of a week that culminates with this big event that's going to be in a stadium that fills 70, 80, 90, and in this year's case, over 100,000 people under the damn roof or in the damn venue. So that in and of itself is why WrestleMania in part really stands out because it is different because it's not crammed into a 15 to 20,000 seat basketball arena. It's put in a big freaking football stadium. Now you look at what are the other important shows for WWE, those ones that have the most name recognition, the most credibility, the most importance. You look at the Royal Rumbles, the Summer Slams, and the Survivor Series. And those are the type of shows that you want to stand out and you want to feel different and you want them to feel bigger. Especially now that you've got so many pay-per-view special events with the brand split. You've got Raw doing its own pay-per-views and SmackDown doing its own pay-per-views. Shows like the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series are going to be those few special shows where these brands can actually come together and you actually could potentially get some unique, interesting matchups. So you like the thought of... Shows like the Royal Rumble being presented as different, as special, as more important than the others, because frankly they are. And especially as you're trying to set up yourself on the road to WrestleMania, why not start off that road to WrestleMania in an arena, in a venue that holds sixty to 70,000 people like the Alamo Dome? Why wouldn't you do that? You want that whole two-plus month period to feel like it's the most important time of the year for your company, because frankly it is. You survive that entire year in large part off of WrestleMania alone. So why not try to maximize that as much as you possibly can and make every step along the road to WrestleMania from the beginning of 2017 until actual WrestleMania 33 itself seem of vital and critical importance. It's also a good way to prepare some of these people for a couple months later performing in that type of big venue at WrestleMania. You know, it's one of those things when you're working at an NXT level, one of the good things that the NXT brand does now is it works these guys in their NXT takeover events in the big venues. <clears throat> They're not working in front of four or 500 people. They're working in front of 10, 15, 20,000 people. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to teach these guys how to perform at the main roster level. 
Well, they're going to be performing in venues of that size on a consistent basis, at least on the television tapings, week in and week out, every single month and year. So you're trying to prepare these guys for that, and the only way ultimately to prepare them for that is to put them in that situation and see how they respond, see how they perform, and see how they get over. Well, now with the Royal Rumble, it's another chance to see how some of these guys perform on a big, huge stage to prepare them for performing on the biggest, hugest stage that the company and the business has a couple of months later. You know, also with having the pressure of having to fill a big arena like the Alamo Dome, it might force the WWE to be a little bit more on its P's and Q's. It might force them to throw a little bit more at the Royal Rumble to care a little bit more about the Royal Rumble. Because one thing's for sure, the WWE, now that they've dis made this decision and they're going in this direction, they can't sit there and afford to have to block off half of the Alamo Dome like you're playing a damn Spurs game there. You can't do that. You can only hide that on TV so much, and the way social media is, and you sit there and you only have a half-filled arena, that could spell disaster for you. Because this is the type of show where you're trying to make a statement. WrestleMania every year is a statement for this company. Sometimes it doesn't make the statement that was intended, but it is a statement nonetheless of even as it becomes a more niche product and its audience is still decreasing, is that when shit gets to get, this company can put together a big type of event, a Super Bowl-feeling type of week, and they can make a lot of money, and they can draw a lot of interest and draw a lot of fans to their event. Well, now here's another chance to do that again with the Royal Rumble. It's a way to try to establish legitimacy or you know, maintain legitimacy. It's another way to get more mainstream attention. It's a, another way to get a lot of different things accomplished. And my hope is that with the pressure of having to fill that big venue that there will be the pressure of expectations of having to deliver a better show, and they actually do deliver a better show. Now, I'm kind of living in a fantasy land there, I grant you, but, you know, hopefully they do. And hopefully when all is said and done, they get a sold-out venue where they've got however many the Alamo Dome sits, I think it's 60-plus thousand people. You know, that's a nice statement to start off 2017 for the WWE. Now, granted, that will lead to Dave Meltzer coming on later because he's a fucking moron talking about how the WWE actually only drew 35,000 people to the Alamo Dome. Da, 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 da. And just a quick side note here. Apparently, Dave Meltzer doesn't understand the concept of comp tickets. Like at WrestleMania, he talked about how they didn't draw over 100,000 people. Now, maybe in theory, they didn't sell over 100,000 tickets. That could be true. There might have been 15, 20, 25,000 comps. But that is standard operating procedure for any major type of sporting event in this country. Up to and including the Final Four. Oh, and by the way, the Super Bowl. You really think every single person that goes to the Super Bowl actually had to pay for Super Bowl tickets out of their own pockets? Are you fucking kidding me? Those go to sponsors that go to other cor corporate entities. So at the Super Bowl, there's 15, 20, 25,000 comps. That doesn't mean that the attendance figure isn't what the attendance figure is. This is just as stupid as Meltzer all these years later, almost three decades later, trying to sit there and assert that the WWE didn't draw 93,000 people to the fucking Silverdome. When it was a football stadium that held about 80,000 people and the seats were filled and you had umpteen thousand other seats on the floor level that you don't have at a football game. Yes, maybe there were fifteen to 20,000 comps for that event, but again, it doesn't mean that the attendance wasn't 93,000. And you'll have people like Dave Meltzer and others, even if they do manage to fill the venue, will sit there and perpetuate this lie about how the audience isn't what it fucking is, and basically accuse this company of fraud. And it, it baffles my mind. I say a lot of things about the WWE, and I talk about some of the things they do to cook certain numbers and what have you. But why would a company like the WWE, a publicly traded entity that has to worry about the SEC and so many other regulatory bodies, commit such an overtly obvious fraud? If they were to sit there and lie about their numbers and report inaccurate numbers, they would be found out like that. And would it really make sense for a company to report inaccurate numbers or to sit there and fudge the numbers and then have to backfill the money and take the money from somewhere else? No, that's fucking stupid. But I can only imagine that's what's going to come in January. Even if they do manage to fill the venue and have it be a sellout, there will be fifteen to 20,000 comps, and idiots like Meltzer and others will sit there and talk about how they didn't actually sell at the goddamn show and the audience wasn't actually what it was and the attendance figures weren't actually what they were. How come nobody ever calls out Meltzer on that shit and actually like takes him to the woodshed for that shit? Because he's so obviously fucking wrong. 
Nonetheless, off of my soapbox for a moment. I hope the WWE takes this as an opportunity to do something positive to kick off 2017 in the right way. I mean, I'm hopeful, but obviously not optimistic. I do fear that it's going to be what Cornette said about the 97 Royal Rumble coming true again in 2017. You're going to have a show where it's a stadium that needed a show more than a show that needed or deserved a stadium. And right now, I don't really know where they're going to come up with the appeal, the attraction, uh, the star power to be able to justify having the Royal Rumble in this type of big venue. Now, maybe you can get away with the fact that it is the Royal Rumble. And it's got the Royal Rumble match. And you know what? In theory, you're right. You can build an entirely successful week out of that event and make a lot of money off of it. And if you do that, that's fine. But they got to do it right. So I applaud the WWE for their aggressiveness here and setting an ambitious goal. And I hope this kind of carries over to SummerSlam and Survivor Series, and in particular SummerSlam. If you're going to have SummerSlam be your WrestleMania of the summer, then it needs to be in a WrestleMania-style venue. As far as I'm concerned, going forward, especially with them doing this brand split and doing all of these freaking Raw and SmackDown pay-per-views, the Big Four need to feel like the Big Four. And the easiest way to make the Big Four feel like the Big Four is to put them in baseball stadiums and football arenas. No more basketball venues that hold 15 to 20,000 people for Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, or Survivor Series. They need to be in venues that hold 50, 60, 70,000 plus people. You need to make those shows feel like big shows to give, I think, the fans a reason to care about those shows like they are big shows. You put them in those type of venues, the fans, as a result, in large part, will think that, hey, this show does matter more, and maybe the company will actually give a fuck more and do a better job of giving me an interesting, compelling product. I know I'm dreaming here. I know I'm dreaming. But maybe, just maybe, they can do just that. But maybe it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because they'll put a bunch of people in there. Maybe they won't fully sell it out, and then Dave Meltzer will tell you the audience was half the fuck it was, because apparently he thinks the WWE is going to commit some type of overtly blatant, obvious stock fraud like that. So what the fuck does it matter? <laughs>